Hi, in this video we'll be talking about slope, or what we call the rate of change. Now, the slope still has the formula we discussed in the last video, it's the rise over run. But in some cases, you will need to actually use the formula to be able to find the slope. Let's see the examples we have here. Now, we have three examples here. One of them is to find the slope using two points that are on the line of that I want to find the slope for or if I actually have a graph and I need to find the slope of that graph or the last case when you have a table and you're required to find the slope if I have two points and a first point and the second point the first point I'm going to call that x1 y1 and the second point is x2 y2 and I'm going to find the slope we said before we refer to the slope by the letter m we substitute in the formula we have so that's going to be 8 minus 1 over 4 minus negative 6 so I can see now that the my slope is going to be 7 over 10 this is in the first case the slope is positive I know that the graph of this line will show an increasing behavior although we don't have that graph in this case here when we have the graph you choose the two points on the slope and I have two points chosen for me I need to write the coordinates of those two points the first point here is 0 and 2 and the second point is 2 and negative 2 again name your points just to make sure you don't make any mistakes as you are substituting so I have x1 y1 and x2 y2 and find the slope so we have negative 2 minus 2 over 2 minus 0 so it's negative 4 over 2 the slope is negative 2 now a commonly asked question in this case does it make a difference which point I start with like we, dis we said that 0 and 2 is the first point and 2 negative 2 is the second point actually it doesn't and let me show you that it doesn't now I'm going to rename my points and find the slope and see if it makes a difference or not so instead of naming this x1 y1 and x2 y2 I'm going to change that I'm going to have this point to the first one so this is x1 y1 and this point here is x2 y2 slope again substituting I have 2 minus negative 2 over 0 minus 2 so it's 4 over negative 2 when you simplify your slopes is still the same which is negative 2 so it doesn't matter in which order you write the points as long as the x and y coordinates of the same point are named with the same number this graph has a negative slope and a decreasing behavior as we discussed in our last video the last thing what if I have a table like that and this table represents a real-life situation and this is why in this case they will not ask you to find the slope they will ask you to find the rate of change in real-life situations and word problems you are asked to find the rate of change you need to know it's the exact same thing rate of change is the slope now when I have a table like this the first column here does represent all the values of x and the second one represents the value of y why because x here is the input and y is the output so always the first column is x and the second one is y if this table was horizontal table the first row would be x and the second one would be y I'm going to choose any two points on the table and as we said before it doesn't make any difference which two points you choose my first point here is 2 and 29,000 the second point is 5 and 27,500 again x1 y1 x2 y2 naming the points will make you avoid mistakes when you substitute so we have 27,500 minus 29,000 over 5 minus 2 your answer is going to be negative 1,500 over 3 so the slope in this case is negative 500 now when you find the rate of change you are required to write the units negative 500 what well we had y on top so it's negative 500 feet and we had in the denominator x so that's per minute now this is the rate of change what represents the slope in case i want to show this table in a graph now i hope you enjoyed this and you understood it now it's your turn to try so why don't you try solving 
these questions, which are exactly the same as the ones we have just discussed. If you leave your answers in the comments, I'll let you know if they're correct. In our next video, we will be discussing the slope-intercept form of linear equations. Thanks for watching.